So at 6 p.m., um, I'd like to open up the meeting. And are there any adjustments at all to the agenda? No, I've got nothing. Okay. I've got a few, but they're just uh, um, little updates that um, pretty much under the town highway report. Um, okay. So nothing, nothing major. Um, so um, I assume that some people are here uh, for public comment, and this is the time in the agenda for public comment. Um, what I'd like to ask people to do is to keep their comments um, fairly succinct. Um, I think what we'll do is give everyone at least five minutes. Um, the, the select board can choose to respond to the public comment or not. That's, that's their choice. Um, and we'll just go from there. So anyone who is here for public comment, um, you know, you could either sort of raise your hand and say, I'd like to speak or, or just um, unmute your mic and start speaking. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. So are there any, any public comment at all? Andy? I can't hear Andy. Yeah, she's muted. You gotta unmute your mic, Andy. Okay, okay. that's good. You're good. Um, I was quite troubled by the May 11th select board meeting that I watched last night. Um, now, granted, I'm not a regular at select board meetings, and maybe I don't understand the procedure, but what I saw was not an open debate about hiring a new uh, road um, commissioner. It looked to me like somebody wanted to push somebody in there and did not want to talk to other people, especially people who are already currently on the road crew who probably would have some experience and the other thing that troubled me was that when people asked questions just legitimate questions the replies were quite condescending and people asked specific things like what are his qualifications maybe he has qualifications but the only reply we got was he's qualified that's it no nothing else and it seems to me that in a job where you're hiring some a new person you probably want to have as many i understand you can't talk to 100 people but i we had a full-time career for 30 years and i served on many committees and boards and i found time after work and my things to talk to other people about my committee work so i think you could talk to one person every day for like five days and talk to different people. What I saw was very much strong-armed, pushing somebody in, people not allowed to ask questions. Um, I'm gonna say condescended to when they wanted answers that seems to me are, are legitimate questions to ask. And I wanna know why this person who is not on the road crew is the best person to be the commissioner over anybody else and being that he's in florida all winter so can i speak by any sure go ahead so on page 36 in your town report it was budgeted and passed for a road commissioner to be hired. So this has been in discussion for a while. It's nothing that, this is back before November that it's been in discussion of hiring somebody. Um, that was just my input. It, it went out before the town meeting. It's in the town report. It's on page 36, road commissioner, budgeting, um, and it was approved. That's my two cents. Andy, were you finished? Pretty much. Um, I, okay. I would like an answer to like why this is the only person that was, it seems like there was a predetermined outcome and it should not be that way. So. 
Brian I'm or done. Paul, do you want to try to answer that question or? Um, well, we, we did we did hold an interview. We did um, review the person's qualification. So uh, the person, in my view, is qualified. I don't know what Brian and uh, uh, Mike feel. Yeah, I so feel we did. We did do our homework on this. May I respond? Yes. Um, you talked to one person, and when you were asked last night, what or not last? When I watched it last night. You were asked why you only talked to one person and you said, I don't have time. Okay, that's not the answer people want to hear from a select board person. What they want to hear is, I talked to as many people as possible to make sure we got the right person for the job. We don't want to hear, I don't have time to talk to more than one, one person, really? So I, I think at this point, we all know you wanted this person in, and you were not willing to listen to anybody. Well, well I'm going to stop you there, Andy, because I, I, that wasn't part of my thought process. You, I mean, you can think that, but it wasn't. What was your thought process? Um, I gave you an honest answer, okay? Um, I put oh. in as much time. Oh, excuse me. Can I talk, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I, w I put in as much time as I have to put in. That's all I can tell you. Brian and Michael can speak for themselves. Um, this there's a there's an opening for this position that comes up every year and i would invite anyone who's interested to come in and participate in that um you know i can't give more time than i have wouldn't you say that's a reasonable statement yes i do um, believe I would, so how many applicants do they have i would say that in my years of having a full-time job and being on committees I would not have accepted the committee position if I did not have some time after work to devote to it. And I certainly think you could have probably found time. You said this was announced a while ago. I think you probably could have found time to talk to more than one person. Well, well thank um, you for sharing your opinion, but just for some background, this is an appointed position like we have a lot of other appointed positions. And generally, again, I'm new to this position. I've only been doing a little over a year. Um, one, we, we don't usually do a board of interviews for the zoning administrator for a lot of these other positions that we appoint. So um, I, it was a, I, I didn't understand that comment, but um, if that's different, Brian and Michael, I, I but that's what historically done. We just, somebody says they're interested in a particular appointed position and we usually put them in. Yeah, that's pretty common to happen. There's not that many people in, in 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 Woodbury that's vol that volunteers for positions or paid positions. It's a small town, and yeah. So, so I'll speak. Apparently, you thought I was condescending, and I wasn't trying to be condescending. Um, if I was sounding condescending, that was probably some of the frustration because I, I've been kind of reviewing the comments that I've seen on the. Woodbury crime page, which I'm going to get off because it just, it's a horrible place for people to make comments. Um, you know, my, I got letters saying I had no integrity, which again, I challenged that. And so, so if my, if my comments seemed to be la you know, I would apologize to you because they weren't intended that way. I, I also would disagree that uh, uh, there wasn't an opportunity for input. In fact, some of the people I asked them what their solution would be and I got no answer. Okay. Um, and, and again, all I can say is I'll, I do the best I can in this position. I was asked to run and I was elected. Um, I'm doing the very best I can. I can promise you that I'm trying to do this in a fair manner. Um, and and uh, if people don't like that in whatever it is, a year and a half, I can step down and I'm going to just finish my term. But, uh, you know, Brian's term is up. I don't know if he's going to run in March. Uh, people that have time and think they can do a great job, I would welcome them to come in. I know it's been a learning experience for me. And, and that's part of why we're doing this is the, the amount of work that people were being asked to do. These board members was just too much and I just can't do it. And if people feel like that uh, they have time, then they should step up because we could probably appoint them to something. There's, there's other town positions available. Yeah. There's a lot of positions when we find somebody that comes along that is qualified for them, we do appoint them right off. We don't take a lot of time because we don't have a lot of time to find people for these positions. Chuck is more than qualified for this job, and he's a good man for it. Yes. Well, this, um, Paul just said a little while ago that this came up, it was a while ago. It wasn't like you had one day 
to pick someone. But I would like to know, is there anyone who's currently on the road crew that expressed interest in the position? No, no. not that I'm aware of. No. In, in fact, I wrote for him and said he was not interested in the position. He didn't want those duties. And so I don't know if you're here for the discussion. The reason we're doing this is there's a gap between what the road foreman does and what we need done. That's really the issue. And Michael was doing some of those duties for the last year and it was being kind of difficult, I believe, for Michael as well. So this is why we did find somebody that could take care of these duties that had the time for it. Yeah, I, I've been doing a lot of the contact work with town residents for yep. actually quite a, a few years. Um, yep. And um, it is a relief to me to have someone else doing that. And I'm, you know, kind of working with Chuck in this transition to um, for, you know, different projects, different people that, are, that contact me or, or contact um, have issues about the roads and where they'll send a message over the uh, website. Um, I just want to make one short comment. I did abstain from the vote. I would have preferred a process where we did um, try to s solicit other people, but you know, at the last meeting, um, the select board did vote and to choose to um, appoint Chuck Batchelder as the road commissioner. Um, one year. And, and, and one year. My, this is a one-year appointment. One-year appointment. And my my position at this point is, uh, you know, I don't want to create a, a battle over this. I want to move forward. Chuck is is uh, has had a really good start. I think the road crew did not dissipate and all walk home. Um, things are okay and um we're working to make sure that they're more than okay so um, i'm you know want to just kind of move forward with this and um maybe a, a year from now chuck won't want to do it and there are things maybe. that we still need to work out sure. with this position which we're going to work on tonight so um you know i can understand where people might be upset um but um from from my point of view at this point as a select board member i, I would like to just Kind of move forward and with with what we've done and um make it make it good for the town all right and if this doesn't work in a year we'll do something different are there any so it's um 12 after 6 um i'd like to end this discussion um by 6 20. are there other people that would like to make a comment um that have have joined the meeting for that purpose. We're discussing, if you want to just maybe raise your hand so that we can indicate to, so, okay, Maggie, go ahead. So what is normally the process that happens when somebody is appointed to this? Does it go out for like, does it go out on front porch forum? Like we're looking for somebody? How does that work? For, for all the normal. But for the town official appointments, um, usually towards the end of the um, year before town meeting, people whose terms are up who are already serving are contacted and we ask them if they would if they want to continue or not. Um, most people will indicate then whether they would like to be done or they want to continue. And then shortly after um, town meeting, um, actually the meeting after town meeting, select board meeting, all of those people that have indicated that they would like to continue are appointed. Um, and then, you know, we did put out on Front Porch Forum um, other town official appointments that were still empty. There's a bunch still empty. And there are some still Is empty. Is there a no list somewhere? Yes, there is a list, yes. Uh, I could send it to you if you'd like. Um, okay. And, and for some history, this position hasn't been filled for a few years. They hadn't been filling it so it was our idea to try to fill it for one year and see if it helped with some of the issues we were having yeah this 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 position is i don't know when we've had a road commissioner last brian or paul might remember probably been eight or ten years yeah, yeah. um don't hold me to that i'd have to do some research yeah. Yeah, so, so what what is the um job duties of the road commissioner we're going to be working on that tonight we have a draft, um, have a draft. draft description and we're going to be refining that this evening um, okay. And this is something that can be done from Florida? Well, that's that's a question. The the winter part of it is is a question. Um, okay. that's some, again, that's something that we have to work out. What is that? 
Anything else, Maggie? Nope, that's it. If you okay. could send me that list, I would. I will send you the list. Yeah. Oh, appointed, appointed. Okay. Unappointed officials. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Positions that need filling because it'd be great to get get some of those filled up. Okay. Uh, Heather, did you? No, you're good. Gary, would you like to make a comment? I think he must be froze. Yeah, it looks like he's Is he there. there. I see his picture. I see his picture, but he's not moving at all. Um, okay, I think he might, that much might be. Oh, there he is. There he is. Yeah, I guess I kind of wonder how, how, if the, if the job description is just being crafted to fit the person who's already got the job, how, like, I mean, are the job duties going to include federal grant writing? Are the job duties going to include no. spreadsheets? No. Are they going to include? No. So, so just to make it clear, we have the job description. It's, it's probably going to have some changes made to it over time, as all job descriptions yeah. do. And so who's going to do the administrative duties that the road commissioner, that the Michael's person still going to maintain I that. I have been so doing So why, all... again, do we need this third person if you're already doing the administrative work? Because there's a lot more to it than just the administrative work. I have I have been considered uh, the town highway administrative assistant, and basically I was assisting the road foreman when we when we had a new road foreman after Haley Daly left, um, uh, because our present road foreman didn't want to deal with all of the, you know, government stuff, and grant writing and stuff. So I... I haven't been calling, I'm not a road commissioner. I don't have the technical knowledge for fixing roads or equipment or anything like that. But I, over my time tenure as a select board member, I have become pretty familiar with dealing with state agencies and writing grants, et cetera. Yeah. So, so that's the job that I have done and I'm gonna continue doing that as the town highway administrative assistant. Um, and then Chuck, our new road commissioner will basically be working with the road crew specifically the road foreman and any of the technical maintenance work, uh, equipment work, and, and he'll be at our select board meetings so that if we have somebody come in who has questions to the select board that we don't have the experience Correct. or the knowledge to answer, he can answer those questions and, and so that we can have a, rather than a just get our ears chewed off discussion with us going, I don't know the answer to that. Right. We would have that, that, and that's so, all completely fair too, but it still just doesn't make sense. Well, I'm interested we, to see what your solution will be to the winters in Florida, because I just don't yeah. think that's right. I just well, don't agree with that. Again, yeah. that's something that we have to figure out. And, and you know, it's not unusual for us to tweak a job, job description, like the job description for the road foreman, which we also need to relook at um, now that we have a road commissioner. But when, um, when our former road foreman did leave the position, we had to reform the job description after the fact for the new road foreman um so things like this who was already in the position right who was already in the position so it's it's not unusual for the town to have to kind of fix something to work with the situation that we're presently involved in and that's what we're going to that's what we'll be doing and if, you know we will talk about it tonight and may and we may find that there are other things that, that need to be changed uh, in the future any other, Gary, do you have any comments? You've got to unmute your, no. You got to unmute your mic. No, okay. Okay. Anyone else have any comments? It's how many months? Um, how many months of the year is he in Florida? Who's talking? Um, uh, me. Oh, okay, sorry, I didn't see you was talking, my mistake. I'm not sure how many months. Can you answer that? Chuck, can you answer that? Chuck, can you answer that question? I can. I have been in Florida from the 1st of December until the 1st of May. It will change this year. I won't be going as early, and I will be home before mud season. Okay. Five months. That's five months. No, it used to be. It's not going to be now. What will it be? What will it be? Depends on when me mud season starts. If it starts town meeting day, that's when I'll be home. And we haven't had an issue with winter maintenance. <laughs> haven't had an issue with winter maintenance. Our issue is we've got a long list of stuff from the state we got to do with our summer maintenance. Yeah, I know. winter maintenance not an issue. Uh, but but I, I would like to know. I don't know who's I, talking. Wait, please, what, what, if, one at a time, please. 
if our taxpayer money is paying for a position for somebody who's not going to be here some of the time, I would like to know how many months we're going to be paying him for. We're not going to be paying him when he's in Florida. No. Okay. And Paul, can yes, I ask you? Yes. Chuck, how much money do you have in your budget to pay me? $5,000. Yes. yes. And that's supposed to be for 10 hours a week until I go to Florida. And I'm putting about 35 hours a week in right now. So it's not a lot of money we're talking about here. What's that? Not a lot of money we're talking about here. No, and if somebody is going to complain that I'm not putting time enough in, they better I, think again. I, I think what the, it's my turn. I think that nobody's complaining about the time you're putting in, but it's the time you're going to be gone when you're, when we feel, or I feel like you're going to be most needed. When I are said last time, these kids are going to be, I'm not done speaking. When these boys are done plowing and being in 20 below weather and they need more hands on deck and they need the people who work for our town, we need you to be here. You're not going to be here. We don't need so him I don't understand how we don't that need works. him to plow the roads, Heather. What's that? We don't need him to plow the roads. We have him. No, I know, but we need his hands on deck when, when no, we don't. shit hits no, we the don't. roads. The, the okay. present, okay. The present okay. road, if, if we have the same road crew that we have now, they are well experienced with dealing with winter. Um, and, you know, I, I don't have any qualms about uh, our present road car. crew dealing with winter time. They've been doing it right along. Okay. Okay. Chuck, Chuck's experience and guidance is, is, as Paul said, more for the different projects that we, uh, you know, the summer road maintenance work. There's been a, you know, right at the moment, there's a lot of ditching work going on. Um, there's a lot of stuff. We've got a whole list. If you want to come by sometime and look the stuff over, there's a daunting list of things that need to get done. And the state's got us under a, a time frame. So, okay. and that's the main reason that Chuck, Chuck is, that's his main, you know, the main, one of the main purposes for him is to really guide the, the uh, non-winter uh, road maintenance work. Anyone else? It's, it's past 620. I, I'd like to end this. Um, and I do thank you for coming thank and, you. and, and uh, offering your comments. Um, and I, and I would like to speak a second. Uh, Andy thought I was maybe uh, condescending to Heather, and I wasn't intending to be Heather, so I do apologize if that's the way it came across. It did, and I appreciate your apology, Paul. No Thank problem. You. Thank you. I sometimes get passionate about what I say, and I um, there's you know one of the things that's really unfortunate is the the horrible things that are being said about the select board on Facebook on the Crime Watch page. It's unfortunate that the you know if if you folks have concerns, I'm more than happy to talk to people, but I'm not willing to have people challenge my integrity. I mean, I think in public discourse, we should be able to disagree with each other respectfully without trying to, to say harmful things about the other person. And I really try not to do that. And I would ask people if I, if you, if I ever seem like I'm nasty to you, I'm not trying to be, and I will apologize. But sometimes, I mean, I've had people challenging my integrity. You know, I think the things that have been said on that page are horrible and damaging to the town. Um, I, do, I intend to get off it because I just, it's my, my daughter's upset. My sons are upset. You know, uh, that's part of why people don't fill these positions in town. Disagreeing is perfectly legitimate. I, I, I absolutely appreciate people's differing opinions. What I don't appreciate is when someone makes it personal, that someone's a liar or they're stupid. You know, that's, never, that's what I I'm agree. seeing. But that's I, what I'm seeing on the face. I read that stuff. Sure, and sure, some, sure. You know, and I, I think call some you people. Yes, I did call you condescending. No, and, and they're, that, they're saying there's, there's shady, underhanded sort of. things going on, and I, that's highly inappropriate. When you're so looking that's at all I'm here, saying. So yeah, if I'm it. willing to move forward from here, as long as people just, let's talk nice to each other. We all live in the same town, and I want to be friends with people. I know we don't all get along, and that's okay. And we're not always going to agree. Um, and that's okay, too. That's what makes us what we are. Um, and sometimes we're going to ha have differing opinions and then, you know, we're going to move on with what we don't always agree with. But as I said, in this one, we're going to try it for a year. And if it doesn't work, we'll make some changes. And I respect that. And I'm sorry for calling you condescending and not bringing it to your face the next time right, I feel that way. Like, I'll yeah. call you out in the moment. I Just will come say and see you, me. Because yes, that's why I do it with other people. Stop the conversation right there. Yeah. Or, say, or, come, or come see me. Because that's how I deal with people. Thank I go you. see them.
Yes, yes. Then I forgive me okay. for not giving Thank you, you. That due respect. You are right. No yes. worries. All Thank right. You. Have Make a great sure night. You bring a mask. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to wear one for me if you stand six feet away and don't spit right a lot. On. Thank you guys. And thank All you right. for your hard work. I know it sucks. All right. Bye bye. Okay. So I'd like to move on. Um, uh, is, can I, do I have a motion to approve the bills to the town? I'll move. I'll, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then I, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes to the uh, May 11th, 2020 select board meeting. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So there is a copy of the minutes down at the town office. Um, you get a chance to get down and, and sign them. Sign them. Yeah. Um, so we'll move on to the town hiring report. And the first thing that I have on the agenda is the road commissioner job description and the pay rate. Um, I know that we discussed the pay rate in our deliberations after the, um, the interview and executive session, but we failed to um, approve that in a public meeting uh, last month. And that, that's my fault for not um, bringing yes, it up. Yes, we did, because that was our intent. Yeah, so um, we'll do that also. Um, so um, what I'd like to do is just briefly go over, there's some questions that I have in, in reading over the, um, the job uh, description that we have so far. Um, so would you like me to just start with those or? Yeah, I'm printing it off. Just go, I'll shut my mic off for a second here. Okay. So, um, and I know Chuck has asked that we go over this too, just so he's pretty clear on what he's supposed to be doing, um, which I think, you know, he has a pretty good sense. But so what I'm wondering is, and this came up at the town office um, earlier today, who will be signing off on the uh, invoices um, and also on the um, timesheets for the time crew? Should we continue having Greg Parker's the road foreman do that or should our road commissioner um, now do that? Um, what, how do you and Paul and Brian, how do you feel about that? What I see that, that we put a line on the sheets that I just signed the, the payroll that we just did. Mm -hmm. That works for me. Does that work for Chuck and everybody else? I mean, we're still going to ultimately have to approve it in the end. Right. Yes. I haven't seen anything about it. Oh, because I saw, was that, who signed the, said road commissioner on the uh, pay sheet? Uh, not, I, I didn't see that. I didn't know. If you look on the, that. on the payroll, the okay, top just, of the, the sh right above our signature, there's a signature line that said uh, road commissioner. Okay. And it, yeah. It always has been that way. And Greg has always signed it. signing it. So I don't, and what do you think, Chuck? You're there. Um, I'm not real happy about the way the hours are being used. And I think Brandy's going to talk about that later. Um, it doesn't make a lot of difference to me as long as you and the townspeople are happy. I mean, uh, maybe they need to be held a little more accountable. Okay. Accountable for their time or what they're yes. doing as far as yes, for the time for their time. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's kind of a different question. What I'm wondering is, um, you know, who, at, you know, we've always had last few years, we've had the road foreman that will sign any of the invoices for parts or whatever. Um, and he also, um, the road foreman has been signing the timesheets that each road crew member submits, um, you know, weekly timesheets. Um, so, so in my view of it, I think that uh, Greg's still aware of what he's buying and stuff, so maybe he can right. sign those and Chuck can do the timesheets. Okay. Just throwing it as a maybe. I don't have a strong opinion about this. All right. Any thoughts from Brian and Chuck about that? Yeah, about it, Chuck. that work for you or? Yeah, I, I can do that. Okay. Greg is going to be buying and doing all the purchasing anyways for the most part, so he's going to be signing. Well, he's doing he the most of stuff. it. He gets all the slips. Uh, yeah. Like the, the work on the grader and the groundwork for the excavator and a truck we're going to talk about later. I've pretty much done most of the legwork on that. Okay. But I'm fine with him signing off on it as long as he's happy with it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. And you can sign off at the end or something. Um, so, if he signed with it and you guys okay it, then we're good. Fine. If, I need okay. to, if I need to give you a description of what it is, I can do that too. 
Okay. So, so we'll I, make that a part of the, um, yep. the job description that the road foreman, well, basically that the road commissioner will review um, and sign off on the, the timesheets from the road crew. The and that seems sheet. to be what used to happen because it says road commissioner on the timesheet. Right. I, yeah, I never noticed that all these years. I did today. I said, oh, they changed it and apparently not. <laughs> yeah. So Brandy can fill you in, Chuck, on when those need to be reviewed and, and signed off and put on her desk. You know, so for, long for term, payroll. a long term, if we're thinking long term, I don't know if it's a good idea that we switch it to I Chuck. You're right. I think you're right. Um, oh, because of the winter? Right. Yes. Yep. And, huh. and during my session, I'm planning on bringing in a new timesheet that is required to be filled out. Um, so it's going to be digitally where they they get on their iPad, collect, oh. you know, check in in the morning and check in out night at night. Yeah, the so commission, ultimately, yeah. it's going to be digitally sent to me. Okay. So you're thinking it'd be better for Greg to keep doing it then? Yes. Well, let's go with that for now. Greg can keep doing what he's been doing then. Okay. So yep. that won't that won't become part of the road commissioner. Okay. All right. Very good. I'll add that in. Okay. Um, so you know, and and uh, other parts of the the job description. I'm wondering if um in the um sort of the job summary, the last sentence, should we try to define a little bit more the the term public contact, or um. It seems a little vague to me. Well, it does further down. If you go to 11, it says responsible to receive highway complaints and citizen inquiries. Okay. It talks about meeting with the select board. It talks about inspecting highways, look for storm damage, all those type of things. So it really kind of puts that in his wheelhouse. Okay. So I had what I added one other thing to that to 11. Um, there was to receive highway complaints. Uh, I added road damage notifications and citizen inquiries. Um, yeah, and that's on here. Yeah. So it I receive highway I, citizen complaints and it says inspects the highways after a storm to look for damage and make emergency repairs right. uh, as soon as possible. Right. And I know often, um, you know, people will call me if there's something that's come up. Um, you know, this year during mud season, there was a culvert washing out one evening. Uh, and somebody just sent me an email. Um, it actually came from the website to me uh, about a washout up on um, Bliss Road, um, which I forwarded to Chuck and uh, then got a thank you for having the road crew come and fix it. So that's good. Um, so I often do get fairly yep. frequently if, if there's damaged roads or a tree down or something. Um, and what we should probably do is change the phone message at the town garage. So right. So we'll need to update our. We got that yellow sheet I got up on my wall here for contact. We need to get Chuck on there. Mm. His yep. phone number and email. Yeah. Yep. And as I said, if, as we find holes in this, we'll have to fix them because I'm sure there's going to be something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I I was going to suggest that we just combine the two uh, part number one under responsibilities part one and part five. It's sort of the same thing said twice. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can I mention that I'd also like to know where to send a lot of the complaints that I get. Greg said he likes to get them because he wants to know what's going on. Chuck's not going to be there eight hours a day. Well, so, he does have an he does have an email address, and that's how I've been corresponding quite a bit with Chuck by email, right. sending sending him messages. So, so you should um, send them to both people. Yeah, yeah. Again, that's Chuck's preference. He's the road commissioner, so yeah. Yeah, I'm all for it. Both of us ought to know that. Send them to both. Okay. Yes. No. So, Diane, I I can I can forward Chuck's email address to you. It's actually. Um, well, I won't say it over the, in the meeting, but I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, okay. Okay. Um, Good point. So um, the other the other thing that I, I was reading the road foreman um, job description also, and there were a couple things there that, um, that the road foreman is not doing that I thought we should add to um, the road commissioner. One of them is, um, is uh, works with the road foreman and the select board in preparation of plans for road maintenance for the upcoming year. We had we had talked about putting together a, 
a summer plan for a uh, road maintenance work and, and that's not mentioned in the so so on um that's pretty much what five says mm -hmm. um it sort of says works to prioritize with the road and prioritize work and to schedule all highway maintenance yeah so maybe we could just add something about the summer work plan there. summer work plan okay yeah, yeah and, would, and we need to get on that because i ain't got a clue what the plan is all right. Okay. Um, I can send you a copy of it if you'd like. Well, you can. I'm sure there's going to be some modifications to it. Yeah, no, there is. You know, any plan with the roads is just a plan. There's stuff exactly. that happens. Yes. The old bumper sticker. I, you know what I mean? If you would send me a, a copy of that, I'd appreciate yeah, I will, it. I will send is that, that that highway thing where it talks about the road, every yes. bit of road that, okay. Yeah. Because what we've discussed, Chuck, for the this summer, our priority is, is brush and berm removal, culvert maintenance, things like that, just general highway, get them shaped up. You're, me too. Me too. Yeah. And then the other, the other part that was under the road foreman uh, thing that isn't mentioned, it's again, it is mentioned, but not um, specifically or in a direct way, is that the, uh, it, you know, in the road foreman thing, it says the road foreman will work with the select board in preparation of the annual town highway budget. So I would like to have it be pretty specific in the. Um, so do you want to make the changes to that one, Michael, and I'll make the changes to the commissioner one? Yes. Yeah. Because that seems that. very reasonable. So let's let's make these changes, and then uh, if you, I'll send it out to you and Brian yeah, and before Chuck the next meeting. Yeah, and then we'll we'll re, you know review them before the next meeting, and then um, uh, make any changes that we need to between then, and, and then we can approve them at the next slide. Correct. Meeting. And are we comfortable with the direction we've given Chuck on focusing on getting the road shaped up with the grader, um, berm removal, brush, and general culvert maintenance? Sounds good to me. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that that's kind of what we talked yeah. about. Yeah. And we okay, can. That's you know, good because we're we're replacing culverts over in Charity Hill now. Yeah. Okay. On the upper yeah. half. So yeah, we're, we're thinking of things like cleaning culvert ends and flushing that need it, those type of things too. Yes. Yeah. I'm all good. You're all it. over it. All over it. Yeah. Perfect. And, and Chuck, all it's right. my it's my understanding that the bottom part of Charity Hill is is all finished now. Uh, pretty much. It's pretty much. A so. touch up. I'm going to have them do, but it looks good. Okay, because that that was part of um, a grants and aid thing for the municipal roads general permit. So we, um, I'll I'll put together a report from that, um, and uh, we'll submit it. We it was a grant that we were awarded, so we'll get some reimbursement for the work that was done there. Um, cool. And I also want to talk about maybe getting some grant money for Foster Hill. That the those okay. ditches and stuff need to be worked okay. a lot. So why don't, why don't we have that conversation? Um, we could either have it at a select board meeting or I, th I think it's okay for you and I to talk about it and um, yep. we can get a sense of, yep. uh, you know, whether it would be a municipal roads grants and aid project um, for this next fiscal year or that would be probably our best avenue. Um, there are a couple of sections of that road that are hydrologically connected. Yes. So we would be eligible for that. Okay. So. There's some of it that needs to happen this year, like right by your house. That road needs oh. to be fixed. Okay, I don't think that's hydrologically connected, but it would be nice to fix yeah, it. Yeah, it needs to be fixed. <laughs> we're going to fix it. It's not going to be a lot of money either, but we're going to fix okay. it. All right. And we've got the culvert over there by the backside of Greenwood that's partially washed out still too, Chuck. You've probably seen it. Big culvert. Uh, I've seen which one? The By the mobile homes, uh, toward the, where the uh, yeah. guardrails. Yes, I have. At the end of that, they kind of filled it some, but it needs quite a bit of more work before we get a gully washer. Yep. Yep. We can we'll all check our soon. list. There's a list. <laughs> okay. um, all right, so I'll have this in you in a couple days, Brian and Michael. Okay. okay. And I'll have the uh, the road foreman one. So, yeah, just try to look for the stuff where there's overlapping things we got to adjust. Right. I'll be, I got to leave for just a second i got a guy here pumping my septic tank and i'll get right back oh, to you okay very good right. so um i have just a couple i have a update on the 4900 um i submitted i signed and submitted the title and a bill of sale to passive the vlct insurance um part um and they are 
in the process of getting a certificate of salvage. And there was no, no one bid on the 4,900. So basically the truck is ours. Um, That's good. So I think the thought is, and, and when Chuck comes back, we could confirm that is to um, hang on to the truck and, and maybe try to make a backup truck out of parts from that and buying something. Um, I he may have a proposal I was hearing. Uh, I think Chuck had, Chuck has been talking with Greg about it and I know okay. Chuck had some thoughts on it. But, um, Perfect. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that. Um, but we're pretty good. We're good with the insurance claim. Um, we just have to wait until once, once they have that certificate of salvage, um, we should be getting a check in the mail. For What'd the you insurance. say they were going to pay us for that, Mike? Uh, $21,000 roughly, approximately. Then minus the towing bill, right? Yeah, the towing bill will come out of that. So it's about seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars that we'll get. Nice. So, um, so, so that's the next thing on our list is forty nine hundred. Yeah. So we were talking about the forty nine hundred, Chuck. Uh, just the insurance claim. I was just updating Brian and Paul on okay. um, where that is, and um, I know Greg mentioned that the you and he had been talking about what you might do with uh, with that um, old truck. We have found a, the twin sister to it. Aha. Uh -huh. And they want uh, 5,500 for it. It runs good, it's got 57, 56,000 miles on it. And it's an old town truck of Essex. Everything seems to be in pretty decent shape. The body is in a lot better shape than the one we've got. Mm -hmm. And it's set up Especially for now. tailgate sander. What's that? Especially now. Yes, yeah. yes. It's set up for tailgate sander. I think it'd be a good replacement. Mm -hmm. Greg and I both did. We talked about okay. it. Okay. And uh, they're asking fifty five hundred. Okay. That is firm. I asked him what his bottom dollar was. So is that your recommendation to us? It is. Okay. I'll well, make that motion. Well, I'll second it. Wait, wait well, we can just we have to motion then discuss. Okay. okay. All right. So now we can discuss. All right. So technically, because this wasn't warned. Oh, um, we can't really vote on it tonight. We've okay. gotta, it's got to be on the warning. Um, so Chuck, this is like something in the future. If there's something that you want to have discussed, especially if it cons considers money spent by the town, um, let me know and I'll make sure that it's on the agenda so that we can um, vote on it. But I think okay. what we could do for tonight, I mean, we could let, I don't know how patient these people would be, but um, you know, we He's could. got one other guy looking at it. I talked yeah. to him today. Or we can schedule a meeting two days from now. and We could schedule a special meeting if, um, if we have to do that. Because I know they need the truck. They need to get it for the chloride. Right. They do. Well, they, and yeah. until we get things situated around, they're actually in a pretty rough spot. Yep. The, yeah. Our town crew was in a pretty rough so spot. So let's do that. What, how soon do we have to warn this? A special meeting takes uh, 24 hours to be warned. So tomorrow night? Uh, I have a meeting tomorrow night. Um, I'm not going to be able to come. And that doesn't give us 24 hours. It would have oh. to be some sometime on Friday. OK, I can do that. I can do it any time Friday, too. Just let me know the time. OK, um, well, let's decide the time. Just so 8 o'clock Friday up. morning? Going to be a short meeting. Um, it works for me. OK, where? OK, so again, um, we could. Well, this has to be publicly warned. Um, it has to be an open meeting. Public is invited to come. So we'll need to either schedule it as a Zoom meeting or um, find a space um, where we can keep our physical distance and people will be required to wear masks, et cetera. Um, I don't expect a lot of people there, probably just the three of us with Chuck. Um, but You want to just meet at the town, town garage Friday morning at 8? Um, I don't think that would really work that well. Um, Fire station, town hall? Yeah, either one of those. Um, the town hall or the community room at the library, we'd, we'd have to probably sit around uh, food bank boxes. But um, so Let's just do the, the town hall at 8 o'clock. Uh, is hall? the town hall available Friday morning, Robin? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, okay, so town hall, um, 8 a.m. Friday morning. Michael, you want to pick up the key here tomorrow? Or? Okay. I've got a key. 
Oh, well, you've got a key. Okay. I've got a key at the fire station. Okay, good. Good. Okay, so I will warn that tomorrow. Um, let's see, if I warn it, yeah, tomorrow is what? Thursday? Actually, I would have to warn it by 8 a.m. tomorrow morning in order for yeah. us to do this Friday morning. Yep. We need 24 hours. So yep. how about um, Friday afternoon at some, maybe mid-afternoon, mid to late afternoon? Okay, one, one two, three. Two, okay. three. Any, any, any time is fine for me. I just need that the time to be. Okay, you want to say three o'clock then? Okay. I mean, I'll do this first thing tomorrow morning. Um, so three p.m. Friday 3 PM. morning. Friday morning. Yeah. No, Friday afternoon, Friday not Friday morning, morning, Brian. I'm not getting up that early. <laughs> Friday you can. You can. No, 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 nice no. and cool then. Three p.m. All right. Friday afternoon. Town hall. Okay. Steps of the town and hall. I, I'd just like to say, and I, I believe you did already, Mike, that mm -hmm. Greg and I went and looked at it, and we yep. looked at two other trucks at the same time. His feeling and my feeling were the same, that we can mm -hmm. utilize this truck better than we can anything else we've looked at. Okay. That's great. Yeah, that's okay. I'd vote now if we could, so. <laughs> right, I would too. Yeah. So we just okay. got to be aware of that in, in the future that, um, you know. Yeah, I'll so. do my best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I okay so um how about a greater repair update chuck i can do that okay we peter helped uh my uh tim mcclay last friday repairing the blade getting the shims in um got everything tightened up and everything worked good i asked peter how it worked Today, he was doing good. He had the blade stood up. He was cutting a lot more dirt. Um, everything seems to be working good. Mm -hmm. um, the parts for the grader were, uh, hang on, I got it here somewhere. Trying to find the right paper is a lot of fun. I have that trouble myself. Yeah, it was 20. I just had it here a moment ago. Where the hell did it go? Yeah. 2700 or 20. Ha, huh, I just barely had that. <laughs> He's good at losing stuff like me. <laughs> and your secretary. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I tried to. She said no. <laughs> um, I believe it was 2397 or something for. Okay. Uh, so uh, okay. Memory works okay too. We'll accept and, that. And uh, Tim, come up, worked nine hours for three hundred and fifteen dollars. So it was just over three thousand dollars to fix it. Yeah. Get it to it great. I and saw that bill today. What's yeah. that? I saw that bill today. You did. Yeah. And then uh, I bought fifty-five gallon drum of oil at Cat for six hundred and eighty-seven dollars and change. To <clears throat> excuse me to change oil and the transmission rear end and both final drives and a new uh, transmission filter. So okay. within the next week or so, everything will be complete on that. So you're going to do that right at the shop? Yes. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Yep. What did we figure out about tire loading? Were they loaded or they're not loaded? They're not loaded. And I am still talking to Marshall Tire. In fact, I intended to ask Peter today because he seemed to know that they weren't loaded. I don't know if there's tubes in them tires or not, and I've got to get that figured out. All right. They still can be loaded, but it'll be with uh, vegetable juice or uh, organic, some other kind of stuff that it won't eat the wheel up. Gotcha. Yep. So I've got to get that figured out, uh, but I'm still in hot pursuit. Yep. Very good. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I'm also working on a price for the groundwork on the excavator. Hmm. We're going to have to do something with that. He's going to walk it out one of them tracks pretty soon. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I haven't I haven't got anything nailed down yet, but by next okay. meeting I will have. Okay. okay. I know I know Greg had done some in inquiries too. I don't know if he has. You know, I've been talking. He got one quote, and I'm working on two others just to make sure that we get the best deal there is out there. Yep. That's, that's um, the way to go. I, I, other than that, I don't know what to tell you yet. Okay. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. 
Um, any other any other like road maintenance work or updates that you want to share with us? I, I know you mentioned that um, the road crew's been working on Chartier Hill. The top half. Yeah. Uh, um, we're going to replace two culverts. Um, I've been talking to Paul. Paul Betts? Yes. And Great. he's been kind of an unhappy camper. We're moving that old wood that was left there when Harry cut them big trees. Uh huh. We're moving that. We're going to fix behind the guardrails, put a berm in there, to keep mm -hmm. gravel out of his fields. Yeah. Um, it's, there's going to be a little cost in it. It won't be too bad but it'll be real good public relations there. Yeah, I know Paul, Paul has complained to me a couple of times about the gravel in his fields. So. We're gonna fix that. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, that's I'm not sure how the budget goes. I've heard that the fiscal year starts July 1st. Yes. And But Greg is there with the excavator and I've told him we ordered the call works and I told him that I'd like to fix the dirt work there while we're here rather than mm -hmm. moving away and screwing around and coming back. Right. Just to keep productivity up. Yeah. Yep. The work, yeah, just do the work. Um, we'll let Brandy worry about the, uh, the budget. <laughs> He's the money lady. <laughs> I don't want to walk into town clerk's office and get shot, you know. She'll throw something at you. It's okay. <laughs> Um, I guess that's about all I got to say. Okay, I, I just have a couple of things. Um, so I got a I got an email from Shauna Clifford. Uh, these are just little updates, um, basically, for thinking uh, ahead here. I got an e email from Shauna Clifford. She is the District 7 um, manager, director, and Woodbury is now in District 7. And she just mentioned that... Um, uh, you know that the state is trying to have all the agencies cut back on their money so um it looks like the better roads grant that we applied for um you know, usually they notify people by may 1st um because the the idea is that you do the work in the summer you know following may 1st but that decision has been extended out to august 1st and my guess is that chances are um with the state trying to cut money with their drastic drop in revenue that those grants may not get funded this year. Um, so we may want to start thinking about the road by the annex building, just lowering that the best we can um, for this upcoming winter and yeah. not, really, not really trying to do the whole picture that we had planned on doing there. This right, because I spoke with the engineer, the plan will be somewhere around the end of the month, first of June, and I tend to agree with you, Michael, we're probably I think we can go over there with the loader activator. We can lower that. I went over with my tractor and lowered the apron mm -hmm. enough so the water stopped running in the building. So I think, yeah. you know, I can get together with Chuck and we can look at the plan and probably get get it so the water's not coming in. Right. Um, to give us a little time. Yeah. We can definitely divert that water. I, okay. Yeah. We're going to take the road down some, but. Yeah. And well, I, it needs I, to be in a way. Yeah. Right. So uh, maybe after Friday, if you're going to be at that the meeting Friday, we can go over and look at it. You're talking to me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we can look at it Friday. Okay. Three after a three o'clock meeting, uh, we can just go over there and take a peek. Sure. Yeah, we that road actually should be leaned towards the other side of the road. Correct. Right? That's what the engineer said, too. Yeah. He yeah. says it's a couple, three feet high, and it's got to go the other way. Yeah. I and think the entrance to the school driveway needs some work. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. we we can go by what the engineer has come up with and do that right. part um, on our own dime. But um, just taking the material out is we get the material to use somewhere. Yeah. It's all good material. We dug down there several feet. It's all good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I heard about it. Um, in fact, I got I got a place that I want to talk to you guys about that would be perfect to use that stuff. Okay. We can discuss that Friday too. Then. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, so then I also, um, I had tried to arrange a meeting with Shauna Clifford and um, actually Jaron Borg initially, but um, now it's Patrick Ross. He is now, Woodbury is now in his region. He's the stream engineer specialist. Um, and Shauna, of course, is the director of VTrans to 
um, look at the stream bank where the old store was. Um, and I have a, a tentative meeting scheduled with the two of them, um, 8.30, Tuesday morning next week. And I thought while Patrick and Shauna were here, we could also look at the metal culverts in the from the village up to Greenwood Lake. There are three of them, um, two right in the village, uh, you know, one on Valley Lake, one on Church Street, and then the third one is up on Bailey Bridge. That's going to hold us up on ever paving that road. I think that culvert right. really needs to be dealt with. Yeah, so I want, to, I want them to look at it and tell us, you know, does this need to be replaced immediately or, you know, a few years down the road and, and whether and then maybe to get a sense of what we're going to have to replace it with. Um, my guess is that we probably will have to replace it with a box culvert, but yep. maybe not. Um, so that's um, that's kind of another th site that I, while Patrick was here um, and Shauna, that we would look at. And and then I, um, you know, I'm kind of curious to know what Patrick would say about um, the Woodbury Mountain Road, Town Highway 18, where those folks want to improve that Class 4 road. I thought maybe while he was here, um, maybe we could go over there also. I don't know if Shauna would be interested in that, but I'd like to have him just give us a sense of what we have to watch out for with that brook that's right tight to the road. It's actually in the, the town right away. Um, yes. So yeah. while he was here, I thought we could look at that too. Um, okay, next when? It's, um, we're gonna meet, uh, Patrick and Shauna will be here um, at 8.30. We'll start looking at the stream in the village. I'm going to meet with Shauna at 8 a.m. to go what over. What day, Michael? What's that, Paul? What day is that? Oh, sorry, Tuesday, January, uh, June 2nd, next Tuesday. Um, Shauna's going to come early at 8 o'clock, and we're going to go over the town highway budget to. Okay. It's like an annual thing where so she. That sounds like something you and Chuck can probably do then. Yes. Okay. Yep. I, I think, you know, I think that Chuck and I can, can, can handle this and, um, you know, looking at the culverts and looking at the brook. Yep. Sure. Fine. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah, and we'll report back at the next select board meeting about that. All right. Um, and then there was um, just, uh, Chuck, I wanted to get a hold of you. I'll probably, maybe I'll call or email you tomorrow. I think I forwarded an email from, there's a woman named Nancy Thorpe, lives out on Dog Pond Road, and she had, um, requested that the town road crew do some work um, by her place. Um, and Greg had actually mentioned to me before I heard from her that, that that was a spot that we might want to look at. So I just want to bring you up to speed on that because I did sort of promise her that the road crew would try to do something about that. Absolutely. Yeah, I can so, look at it anytime. Okay. All right. So that's it for me. For I had one. I, I lied to you, Michael. I should update you on the pave, parking lot paving. Okay. So we got two bidders that came to the pre, uh, pre-bid meeting. Uh, I think we sent five out. Um, one came back as undeliverable, it looked like. So four actually went out. Two came and are going to bid on it. Um, the only thing we're going to need to do, I, I, uh, they're going to separate the paving from the uh, old pavement removal because, again, it all is going to work out in the end. But we, the way we structured the bid was to – give us a per ton installed cost and they kind of thought that would skew the price. So um, that also gives us the opportunity to uh, take out the pavement ourselves if we choose to do that. So we'll, we'll kind of see that. So that's what should come out. Hopefully those two people will actually bid on the project. They both seemed pretty hungry and interested in getting it done as soon as possible. Um, so we'll help. That's our next meeting. We'll be opening those bids. Um, and then we will have to get a permit, which I'll get filled out tomorrow and get down to the town offices. The VTRANS is going to require a permit because we're working next to the right of way. Mm -hmm. It's a not an issue, but it's a two hundred and fifty dollar permit. There's not a lot we'll have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And anything else with the town highway report? All right. So um, let's move on to the town treasurer's report. So as far as cash receipts, taking in money, uh, fleet permits, copies, um, Green Mountain passports, um, taking in land records, recording, uh, map recording, vaults, and zoning permits. Um, as far as delinquencies, taking in 
over the last two weeks, um, $1,237.96 for delinquencies. which is putting us down to $82,404.36 for delinquencies right now for the town. Wow. Um, over the last two weeks, I have transferred 50,000 from the money market to our checking um, to pay for expenses. Um, so I had emailed you guys financial statements. The, what I didn't send you was balance sheets and due to due from, so I will get that to you. Okay. Um, by email tomorrow. Um, and if you want, um, and or I can stick it in your, your folder. E email is good for me. Yep. Okay. Could you make paper copies for me? Yep, absolutely. Yep. Thank you. So, so one request is that um, back last year, uh, Skip Lindsay had created a timesheet um, and I want it Im implied. I want it to be used by the road crew. Um, it would benefit the town in doing research as far as <clears throat> how many hours they're they're doing for hauling sand, what how long they're taking either, it'll break it down to what they're doing during the day mm -hmm. and also tracking, um, so with their iPads, um, I'm gonna have Skip Everything is going to be into an Excel spreadsheet. So any data that we can, um, at the end of the year, there'll be a clear, anything to do with grants, um, I just want it utilized in, by them checking in in the morning to clock in, and then by them at the wrap up at the end of the day, what the project they were working on, how long they've spent on it, and if the project's done, it's just a clear form of, of completion or if we're saving money or not saving money by hauling sand or um, it's just long term, it'll be um, beneficial for reports. And I think we kind of did that already, Michael. We had pretty much uh, said this electronic reporting. So if that's helpful, then I'm in favor of the new time form. Well, this, this would be the electronic recording. What we haven't, you know, we've, we have um, agreed that we would like to have that in place. We just haven't worked out a format to actually right. it needs, happen. I think it just needs to get done. Yeah, I, I agree that it needs to get done. It would be good information to have. I guess my concern is, is making it user friendly. I don't know how computer savvy all of our road crew members are. Well, we'll get them. We can maybe get Skip or someone up there to teach them how to use it because I know with my computer forms, they just say, here's your new form and make start using it. Right. What, you know, so, other, yeah. Go I mean, ahead. you know what I'm saying? We just, we kind of need it. We just got to do it. Yeah. What, one alternative that we had spoken about was, and this would require somebody to, to do the entry, so was we had a paper form that they could just fill mm -hmm. out at the end of the day, and then somebody would have to make those entries into the spreadsheet. Um, well, I think we've been dancing around the barn on this issue for a while. I think it makes sense to... You know, I have to log on to my system and enter my time. You know, I think people can learn that. I mean, you guys yeah. do disagree with me. I think we just need to bite this off and do it. Yeah, I, I didn't learn it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. If there's training needed, we'll provide the training. Okay. You know, that's my feeling. Okay, so at, at the town garage, there is a, a, a laptop a computer. computer yeah. And there's also the iPad. So there are two devices. Um, that could be used um, so that um, you know, if we have four, say three road crew members filling stuff out, we'll just have, I mean, they'll have to work that out. How they Right, that way we don't create, you know, I thought about what we discussed before, that just creates something else that someone else has to do. Right. You know, and this is one of those efficiency things. I think just fill out your form at the end of the day and mm -hmm. you know, that gets it in the electric. Cause that's gonna really help you with your grant stuff and our closing out okay. the books. Yep. Cause we know what went where. So is that a form, Brandy? Would there be like a, a a daily log, a weekly form that would then get emailed to you? Where where would the actual uh, log records be stored? It would be sent to me. Okay. And then mine gets gets backed up. But um, 
it would be a weekly. I also want, um, so what happens is they fill in this, this <laughs> easy, like super, you just fill in the blocks and it automatically sends to an Excel spreadsheet um, mm -hmm. and retains, and we can look at that by month, by week, by year. Okay. Um, so you, you have that program now? What's that? You have the program down there now that we can just use? Skip has created it. There's code okay. numbers for working on culverts, hauling sand. Um, it breaks it down so it's very simple. That's good. Yeah. Well, how about we just say they starting the week of June 1st, which is next week, we'll start using this form. Uh, I will talk with Skip and him and I can, um, when we can connect to get over there to set up a time I, that we can meet with them. Okay. Um, yeah. That'll work. Next so week. So if we don't set a date, we'll never do it. So we need to just do it. Next, next week might be a little bit too soon, but okay. let's say definitely by the beginning of the new fiscal year. I would take that. That make more sense for you, Brandy? Yes. Okay. So it will be implemented. So do we need to make a motion to do that? Can uh, I say one thing before you do? Oh, go ahead, Chuck. I would like to see beginning and ending hours of each piece of equipment on this here down beside the legend. I have one of her sheet. But it would be nice to know what the beginning hours of the week, the greater had, and the ending hours of the week, mm -hmm. and all the trucks. Okay. Just because Hello. sooner or later, you are going to have to replace them. And it'd be Correct. Nice what was going on. Yeah. Can we add that, you think? Oh, yeah. We can add more that details. gives us a month. So, so I'll make a motion that we uh, implement this electronic timekeeping system by July 1st. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And also provide training, so. Yeah, yeah, and you'll work, uh, Brandy, you'll work with uh, Skip or whomever can help them with the training? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Okay. So one more thing is, is that I would like the select board to do is to um, tweak our policy so that you have to give a notice for vacation so it doesn't leave at the end of the fiscal year all this time that has to be used and there's no work that's going to get completed because of it. Um, I think there needs to be a notice to the select board requesting. There needs to be a heads up for planning for so like um, a leave slip getting permission for leave. Yes. That sounds like a job for the road commissioner. So okay. Well, I think this I think the select board because they're the we have to, that Yeah, we'll have to make the policy. So probably let's put it on the next meeting to just look at that, wouldn't you think? Okay. Yeah. Because yep. you guys are the ones gonna have to be the backbone of that. Correct. All right. It's a it's probably a valid, so let's at least look at it. Yeah. It is valid. It's very valid valid. Yep. Because I, if someone wants to take the whole month of June off, you know, that could be problematic or you have three people that want to take June off. Grizzly right. came in on a Tuesday and told me that starting Wednesday morning, he was going to be off two weeks. He's right. gone. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so that's because I know for me at work, I've got to put in a leave slip and get permission to take time off. That's usually the standard procedure is, um, you know, putting okay. it in for it well ahead of time and getting it okay. approved. So let's, yeah. if, can we throw that on the agenda for next time to pull yeah. that policy up and review it yeah. and make those changes? We're going to be talking about the personnel policy tonight too. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll um, work that Looks in. It's like Gary's dogs joined the meeting. <laughs> okay, let me just write that down so I'll remember. Okay, anything else, Brandy? So I will be in touch with the select board, bouncing you an email as soon as I get the documentation to extend our line of credit. Um, okay. I have I didn't receive it today. Um, it did run out on the twenty fourth. There's no there's not going to be a lapse. There isn't. Um, um, it went from one point zero interest to one point five. Um, she did make me aware of the the increase, and um, until we get the the rest of the reimbursement back from FEMA. Okay. And I'll have to have you guys sign off on it. So I will email you as soon as I have that in the office yep. to have you come in. Okay. Yep. Anything else? Nope, that's it for nope. me. Okay. Thank so, you, Brandy. Yep. You're welcome.
So Diana, we're set for the town clerk report. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Uh, the office is still closed to the public. It doesn't seem to be bothering anybody at all. Things are getting done. People call and ask questions and we either send them something by mail or or scan it or leave it posted on the bulletin board outside. Um, if I have to notarize something or do a marriage license, we do that out on the porch or sometimes in the parking lot. Uh, I have started, let, you know, since the couple of weeks ago when the governor said we could, I have started letting uh, title searchers into the office uh, one at a time by appointment and preferably only when there are two or less staff here. Um, I had a couple of appointments this week and I think one last week, but they say there's a lot of that kind of work that's backed up. So we'll probably be seeing some more, but people don't seem to be minding, uh, you know, coming in with their masks and making an appointment. And so uh, I asked, uh, Call council to order and install a plexiglass sneeze guard for the uh, front counter. Hmm. Uh, I think other town clerks are saying that, you know, there might be another change as of June 15th or so, but right now things are going okay. Hmm. We haven't really figured out our, our staff staggering yet, but we'll work on that. Um, I did want to mention a complaint that I got from West Woodbury. Uh, people, you know, are sometimes reluctant to speak up because they're afraid of their neighbors. But anyways, there's uh, one uh, resident at the far end of the south end of, I think it's the south end, where you go into the woods. <laughs> Uh, of West Woodbury Road, where there is a, a landowner who um, is just collecting a lot, a lot of junk and different people are living there in campers and chicken shacks and and also a uh, slightly different subject. I mean, I you know, I don't know what we do about something like that. We've got a couple other cases in town. We don't have a junk ordinance and we do have something in our zoning ordinance that talks about the number of cars and miscellaneous junk that can be stored, but uh, that never seems to get uh, attention for enforcement from the zoning administrator. So uh, the other thing she mentioned was the ATV traffic up there is worse than ever. So that's... Uh, yeah, I, I've received a couple complaints from people up in West Woodbury about the ATV mm -hmm. traffic, and apparently the, the problem there is is that there's a class four road that and becomes a class three road and people are that's part of a trail i believe and and they're so they're getting from there to, over to the class four part of the um west woodbury road that comes out down in maple corners so they're just trying they're getting from one class four road to the other yeah, but, um, yeah, but they're not supposed to and they're they've never you know that's never been legal for them to uh, right. be racing. Plus, you know, they come out of the woods and it's a straightaway and it's flat and yep. they yeah, really... Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that's it's, no... a, it's a perennial problem for, it is. for some folks up there. Yeah. And as far as the junk, um, you know, of course, we used to take care of some of those spots on Green Up Day, but this woman who complained, does she, is it her property where people are camping or... No. We, no. Uh, the pro and we could notify the property owner, especially if somebody is kind of squatting there. No, it's not. He owns the property. Uh -huh. And it's it's not roadside litter. It's it's junk that he's collecting. That where people have just dumped it off? No, he collects it and brings it home. Oh. <laughs> that's what I oh. was told. Okay, well, that's if it's his property and that's where the junk is, that's his, um, you know, until it gets totally outrageous. Um, that's their choice. I mean, we there are other places in town, many other places in town that are like that, unfortunately. 
Um, and until it gets outrageous, you know, the town really, there isn't much that we can do about that. We, the state can get involved and has been involved um, in the past with different sites. Um, Especially if there's wetlands involved. Yeah, yep. or, or even, you know. Um, and we've got sheriff time. I suppose we could ask the sheriff to run up there a little bit, but whether they'll do it or not. Yeah, they never were. No, I know, I, I know. What, one of the people that called about the ATV traffic, I asked that person to let me know, um, you know, if there was a particular time of day or particular time of, you know, day of the week or whatever, where the problem was worse, um, so that we could ask the uh, Washington County Sheriff to sit there um, if, you know, in response to that. But um, I haven't heard back from that person. About well, it's that. always... You know, that's it. They've tried that in the past, and the sheriffs always get discouraged because they go up there and nothing's happening. So it's it's tough. I mean, yeah, it's probably well, the week it happens, but who knows right. when? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to know. Um, <sighs> yeah. Well, anyways, I just thought I'd let you know that that's a continuing concern up there. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of a, that. Yeah. Back roads paradise up there, but it's not quite that way. It can anymore yeah, yeah. <laughs> more people are moving up there mm -hmm. okay so you don't have fema report on the agenda but i'll give you one anyways okay right. i have i have a little bit to add to the fema report um okay so, so go ahead well just after the last meeting uh like a day or two later jeremy bogey came and finished up the final grading and spread the topsoil the seed and the mulch and sent his uh invoice soon thereafter and brandy paid it right off so that we could uh, submit the final report to fema now i submitted a requisition on april 15th um a little more than a month ago and it hadn't been addressed yet and you know with their apologies working from home and blah 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 um but then when i told her we also had the final um invoice the final we're ready for the final requisition. She said, why don't you just change it and make it the final one? So that's what I'm doing. I have sent them uh, final uh, site pictures, um, some pictures showing what the landscaping plan was going to be because Russell would, you know, I told you last time they can't do any landscaping until FEMA gives their final approval, which might be a but he'd really like to order the trees now so you get good thing, good stock. Otherwise, yeah. you know, if you wait till July, there's not so much left. So uh, the Stephanie Smith um, in Waterbury was sympathetic to that and wants to get us a, an approval. So I sent pictures of the cedar hedge on one side of the house and that showed where that was gonna be on the other side. And I sent pictures of the split rail fence with the lilacs that are on the other park and showed them where that's gonna be. So. Hopefully we'll get partial approval on that. Um, I also met with uh, Jay, Jacob, is that his name? Shattuck, the new yeah, owner. Jake, Jake Shattuck, yeah. Yeah, the new owner at Chris Wright's house. And I asked him if he would prefer to have split rail fence with some shrubbery or if we he wants to have the cedar hedge like on the other side. And he was very happy that I gave him that choice. And he said he would like to have the cedar hedge, so. That, that'll work. Yeah, that's good. Maybe so, tomorrow I'll get that final uh, report off to uh, Waterbury. So I, um, I uh, contacted Ben Rose today about the situation with the property owners and the check. Um, really? It, yeah, Brandy talked to me about it this morning and she was just kind of concerned you know what what would fema how would they feel you know so i i thought just to that i wanted to just get his point of view on this so that we don't get in trouble with they're not um dealing with the payment that we're trying to give them and he uh he told me that that he'd never come across this situation before sort of a new one for him uh, are you talking about the checks that brandy has for the yeah the the checks and, and our you know, this quandary that we really shouldn't be dealing with of them trying to figure out how they're going to deal with the money that we're giving them. They, they're, 
Um, so I wanted to make sure that we wouldn't get our hands slapped by FEMA for, for something that we have really no control over. Um, yeah. But Ben Ben told me the best thing to do, um, you know, he doesn't really think that FEMA is going to have an issue with this. We, you know, we have the town has the title. We've closed the deal. It's, it's, you know, up to them to figure out what they're going to do with the money. But meanwhile, we're kind of still sitting on it. Um, he said it would be good to send um, FEMA, and by FEMA, he means uh, Ben Rose and Stephanie Smith. And Brandy, I can get you the contact information for them. Send them a copy of the check, any, any, anything that has to do with the check having, you know, not being cashed or deposited for six months and becoming delinquent and void, et cetera. Any of that kind of paperwork, any of the attempts that we've tried to send um, a check with, you know, any, any paper stuff, paper trail that we have, mm -hmm. send it to Ben Rose and Stephanie Smith. So there is something in writing that kind of documents the uh, situation that we're in right at the moment with that. Right, my thing is, is when they, when FEMA comes back to do an audit, that what was submitted for a check number has now been voided and deleted. So it's not accurate information. And, and for me, with my name, my signature on it, I want, I well, want correct documentation so that when it comes back that I'm not getting, getting, um, yeah. Well, that's where sending them the, you know, the notice of the void of the check, et cetera, sending them all of that paperwork that you've received. Yep. Um, sending it to them, they have a record of that. And, you know, so if FEMA does an audit or whatever, there's a paper record, yep. a written record from the town of, of this situation so that it's not held against the town. Um, and, you know, he, he suggested, um, you know, that we just put this money in an account and maybe it could actually make a little interest for us while we're waiting for them to decide. And, and I, I wanted to just check with Brian and Paul and, and Diana too, because you, you're, you've dealt with these two folks quite a bit. Um, you know, Brandy is planning on meeting with them, or was proposing anyway, that to meet with them on Friday to figure this thing out. And, you know, I don't really, I don't think- I don't think Brandy should be subject to that. I agree. And, you know, I don't think it's up to us to try to, try, try to solve their problem. But Diana, go ahead, because I know you probably have some thoughts on this. Well, uh, Kim uh, emailed me uh, a couple of weeks ago saying, asking that the check be rewritten for the $16,000 to her and the rest to him, which is the way she wanted it all along. And I said, you know, when Kirk, you tell, let me know that Kirk has approved this and give me his mailing address and his social security number and then we can consider it and i haven't heard back since then i didn't think i would brandy <laughs> brandy has heard from um kirk about this and it's his usual nasty nastiness emails. so um but our lawyer said our uh, woman from our lawyer's office was in the other day and she said you know basically we need to keep that money available for a year and then if they don't take it then turn it over to unclaimed property and let them fight so, so, again. so maybe that's our best approach for now is just keep it and when the year is we'll turn it over to unclaimed property and stop writing checks yeah i don't think we should write any more checks i think we should just send them both a message saying when you guys figure out how you want this money uh sent to whoever, however. however amount, let us know and we'll send the check. Otherwise, the money is sitting in a, a account somewhere waiting. And will be turned over to unclaimed property at the appropriate time. Right, mm -hmm. and that's it, that's it. That's, you know, yeah. they've, got to, they've got to figure this out. I mean, we don't right. need to get dragged into this again. No, not in between them. No. Does that sound like a good plan? Yeah. I like it. Yep. Sound okay to you, Diana? Well, you and I sat through what we sat through. That's I know, why I don't. I know the situation. Going to get any any further. Yeah. So, but you know, if she can get him to sit down, maybe she can. I don't know. She well, can be tough. The, that's their problem. <laughs> that's their problem. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that does that sound good, Brandy? Yeah. Does that sound, okay. So send that any any paper trail stuff about the checks. That you've had to cancel send that and I'll, I'll give you their contact information 
Um, I have all that, and I have the okay, paperwork. So, all right, so all right, so you and Diana can work that out, and yeah, um, and then so we'll just tell them. What time are we going to send this money into the unclaimed property? Whatever is legal, whatever the law requires. So One for a year. year, it was November second, I believe, is the date of the first, the first set of checks. I cut three sets, and this yeah. will be. I'll be voiding. I'll void these two that you guys had signed off on because clearly. Um, they still haven't decided. Um, they don't. They're not in in agreement with the way that I just cut them. So, again, so it's been over a year, hasn't it? Not yet. No, it hasn't. Well, not yet. Okay. Not yet. November second. That'll be here before we know it. Yep. Yeah. There's a silver lining to all this. In an account right. somewhere. Right. Uh. It would anything? be nice if we had a little escrow account or something we could stick that well, in. Well, yeah, I mean, we could. I mean, you it's hardly been get sitting in. in the checking. I can kick it back over to the money market where it's making 3% interest. Let's do and, that. Because yeah, as that. it is, we're having to, to yeah. pay the interest on the, the line of credit. So, yeah. Okay. We'll be going back tomorrow. Okay, yeah. great. All right. Okay. And anything else, Diana? Uh, guess not. Okay. So um, next on the uh, agenda is a CV fiber letter of support. Um, and I, I sent copies of this to, to you and Paul and Brian. Um, basically, um, they're, they're going after a, a, some federal grant money to um, begin actually implementing some projects. Um, just to kind of update you on CV fiber, it's a, uh, Woodbury is a part of that, um, it's basically a, uh, considered a municipality. It's a group mm -hmm. of different um, towns that have formed together to um, to create a, an entity, I'll call it, um, to uh, get high-speed internet connection to um, all of the different towns, especially rural towns that um, aren't served by it at, at this point in time. Um, there's a very uh, um, successful um, municipality called um, EC Fiber or East Central um, Fiber that um, is actually has a, been operating for a few years now and um, has been providing. Um, hang on a second. I thought my uh, laptop was plugged in, but I guess it isn't. The lap it battery's dying. <laughs> my battery was dying, so I'm plugged in now. Um, so, and they have actually done quite a bit of implementation, um, and this CV fiber um, is pretty much modeling um, what they're doing um, after the, the EC fiber. We do now have a representative to that board. Um, Trevor Thorpe is his name. He sent me this letter of support there. With the pandemic, um, I think the, both the state and the federal governments are becoming aware of the issue of, of lack of um, high-speed internet. It's sort of being compared to the electrification um, kind of government movement that happened back in the 30s, 1930s. So, REA. Yeah. They're going after uh, some federal money for a grant to start implementing some projects in, in the area, um, and they would like the town of Woodbury to um, endorse a letter of support for the grant application. Um, and I read through that and I'm supportive of it. Okay. Um, I tweaked it to make it, you know, to, to fill in the parts that make it be Woodbury um, as the letter of support. Um, I'm definitely in, in support of it also. I'd agree with it too. I'll All the pressure's on Brian. Yeah. Okay. He, he just agreed to it. So, yeah. <laughs> so I would make a motion that we endorse this letter of support to CV Fiber um, and that um, that uh, the select board allow me to be the authority figure to sign the letter of support on behalf of the town of Woodbury. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. So um, I'll do that and I'll, I'll send it off um, tomorrow. Um, next on the agenda is a town forest trail contract. Um, this is the trail that um, the Conservation Commission, um, you know, got a grant for the Vermont Youth Conservation Corps is going to be doing the initial work on the trail um, this summer. 
and uh, this uh, agreement letter is basically the contract for them um, to proceed with, with the work, which I think will happen sometime in June, pretty soon. Um, so, I also read that. Okay. Um, any thoughts on the contract at all, or the agreement, I guess you call it? Um, it looked okay to me, and then to do yeah. the, they're just building a trail for us up there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good. So, so um, I guess I'll make another motion that um, that we that the, the Woodbury Select Board approve um, the serv service agreement with the Vermont Youth Conservation Corps for the work um, on the um, initial work on the town trail and in, in the town forest, and that Second. again, again, the Select Board. Um, uh, allow me to be the, uh, the signee on, on the agreement. Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, all right, good. So um, next on the agenda and, um, is the personnel policy update and then a question about part-time benefits, um, part-time worker benefits. Um, so I sent, uh, I made the changes on the personnel policy um, I think um, we last reviewed it um, at our last meeting in February, February 24th. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it took me a couple, three weeks to do make the changes. Um, and but I sent it in to um, uh, Jill Muir, who's the HR person for VLCT, to, for her to, to uh, review and just kind of vet the what we had done. Um, I've, got, I've got an email back from her that she's pretty much swapped. Um, she's part of the VLCT uh, COVID-19 response team. Mm -hmm. so she doesn't have a lot of free time right at the moment, but she would get to it when she could. And she's last, I think it was last week, she, or actually the week before she said she would send me an email when she thought she might be able to get to it um, this past week. Um, so it looks like we've got to make another change to it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, and you know, the changes that we made before were basically just fleshing out details for what was in there to begin with. So we haven't, you know, done anything really radical to in the in the changes. Um, and this other, you know, the part that we would do for the vacation notification would again be just a, a tweaking of it. Um, yeah. So there. I'm aware that there is an issue with one of our part-time road crew members about um, collecting some sick time leave. Um, and in the personnel policy, it, you know, it is allowed for any, any of the um, road crew members to accrue that sick leave. Um, but they basically would like to be paid for the time that they were out sick. Um, and in the, at the February 24th meeting that, you know, we did agree at that time, um, that um, you know, we would put these uh, benefits in place retroactively to the beginning of the fiscal year 2019, um, 2020, which is uh, July 1st, 2019. Um, so I don't have an issue with paying um, for the sick leave that was that was uh, sick time that was submitted. Um, we determined how much was would have been accrued in that uh, time frame. Um, what uh, the part timers are allowed to accrue? I think it's sixty hours of a. Uh, right, right. My question would be though, is if they started accruing on July first last year, at w what would they have had uh, of for accrued time when they took the sick time off? They would have had. Well, I don't know how much time they've taken off previously. Um, right, that's uh, my point. Yeah. We just have to resolve. You know, what if you had four hours, six hours at the time you took the time off? Right. Do you, do you yeah. know that, Brandy, offhand? How much time has been accrued? Or how much time has been used, I should say. Well, you need to know when, when this was and what day, how much they would have had on that day. So I've never been notified of, of any part-time person on the road crew that has taken off time due to sick time. Okay. Oh, so, okay. So, so it sounds like we got to figure that out. We got to know when those days were. And then we can figure out what time would have been accrued on that day. So if it's two hours, four hours, whatever it is. Right. That's what they uh, can get. Can I speak real quick? Sure. Um, I did mention it to Brandy, but it was after the pay had already been issued and there was nothing on the pay stub saying that he had any sick time. So there wouldn't 
she wouldn't have known where to take it now, but it was only four hours and it was about a month ago. But okay, so for me, that's a conflict of interest and it needs to come from Peter and then sign It come from the employee. Right. Yes. That's totally fine. It was just a, more of a question of how he would actually get that done. Right. So my, my view is, is we, we just got to, we got to figure out when that day was and what amount of time was accrued on that day. And then I have no problem with paying the person for that time, but that's going to also weigh into our time slips, you know, and those approval slips right. we're going to look at is um, just so that way there's a record of what was requested. Cause that's certainly fair to everybody. Right. So Randy, what is the process now for someone um, notifying for sick day? Yeah. You know, sick day. Do they just write it on, on the timesheet? Correct. Okay. Yes. It's notified Correct. on their timesheet. Greg signs off on it. Um, it's, yeah, it's not after the fact and it's already been right. signed and then it's brought to my attention. <coughs> yes. Okay. So, it needs so, to be so my opinion is I think uh, if it's, it's Peter, right? Mike? Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, just needs to send a note to Brandy on the day how many hours it was, and then Brandy can figure out what was available for sick time that day and pay up to the whole day, whatever the amount of time that was available. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That sound fair to everybody? It does, yes. Yeah? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Okay, all right. Um, so yeah, so with the personnel policy, let's, I'll have it on the agenda for um, our next meeting. We'll work on this uh, vacation notification um, language um, and um, maybe by then um, Jill Muir will, would have had time to review it. Um, you know, um, I guess one question I have is, and that partly for Brandy too, you know, we want to make good on having this in the personnel policy and, and not having, you know, not being um, aware of what we had committed to, to the part-time road crew members, um, you know, and we did want to, make it retroactive to the beginning of um, the fiscal year 20, um, which, so is this gonna be a problem if we aren't, you know, technically we should get, we would get the review back from Jill Muir. Um, she would suggest any changes that might stand out as not being um, uh, approved by the state or whatever. Um, and then we would vote, uh, to uh, accept the changes or, or the new revision for the personnel policy. And if she isn't able to get back to us, you know, in June, then. Um, I know, think we just have to run with it. Yeah, okay. So sick time can accrue up to two and 240 hours. Right, for, um, full, for full time. That's this for everybody. Everybody. It can, it can accrue up to. And then, right, then it stops time. accruing. So if we need yeah. to, we need to go backwards and apply sick time. We won't be, they won't be over regardless or losing any sick right. time. Yeah, because we're only going back to last July first. Correct. For the people that didn't get it, get it. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Personal time, we have it as you don't use it, you lose it. Correct. Yes. Yep. Um. So that then will be a decision the, on the board. What? Right. Then we had had the issue with. Um, which we got to when we review this next meeting we'll we were trying to make sure that um the time stops accruing um when you hit the mark and as you come down you know if you use a day then you can earn a day again so we're not because people are losing big chunks of time right. but we can discuss more we actually have the policy in front of us okay yeah. right because as of now it's just you get this this many sick days you get this many or this many hours of sick time um, and it's prorated. Right. Um, so because I think we were going to switch to a, a weekly accruement so that if right. you use eight hours, you could earn two more hours. Because what was happening before is when you give it in lump sums, people were losing blocks of time or wanting to be paid for blocks of time. We didn't really want to pay. So. Right. Okay, well, that that language at at the moment is not in the revised. Yeah, and that's my fault. I just looked at my notes. I'm supposed to be polishing that up. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'll take full responsibility for that. That way, as of July 1, you're not getting your five weeks or you're not getting your your 60 hours, boom, all out of whack, that it's it's um, accrued throughout the year. Right. It comes every week. And that way, you don't ever lose unless you let it build up too far. Right. Right. So That was our plan. And now I look back at my note here, and I don't think I did that yet. So my bad. 
So Brandy, as far as your accounting and auditing and all, if we are going to, to make these retroactive payments to the part-time road crew members, should we do it before the fiscal year ends? So the personal time is gonna be something, I mean, even if we um, credit for the sick time, mm -hmm. they're not losing anything. They're, they'll, I mean, they're still accruing right. it, like, but as far as the personal time, um, it wouldn't be nice to do it within that fiscal year. Okay, and what so about just the, to, what about the Well, just to clear me up, does, does the personal time, do we, is, does that a gone if you don't use it or do people normally get paid for that at the end of the year? Because I know with the state, if you don't use your personal time, it's gone. Correct. I think it's use it, if you don't use, use it, it or lose, lose it. it. Okay. Yeah, use it or lose it. So but we wouldn't be paying also, for that. Yeah, we would also owe the part-timers um, an prorated basis for any of the holiday pay that um, the full-time road crew members have received. Correct. So, um, so you know, I'm just thinking, should we should we make the that payment before we start a new fiscal year? I, I would think so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. we want to keep that expense in the year in which it occurred. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing with accruing sick time and accruing vacations. It's not going to be within the year that it's used or taken. Right. So. Right. Correct. Yeah. I mean, that's it's only choice. it's only it's counted in the year that it's paid out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Um. Anything else about the personnel policy? Okay, the next thing on my agenda is to adjourn. I'll make that motion. All right. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So